Back to the OPL where I just saw a gangplank destroy so many creeps what can only be described as a massacre and take down avant-garde nearly single-handedly. Hello everyone, I'm Jake Spawn Tiberi. Joining me on the desk is Matthew Fish Stewart and Max Atlas Anderson. You just gotta take your hat off to Fantix. You do. The, the is man he the is the best mid laner oh, in Oceania, Atlas. Right? I was burnt once, Spawn, <laughs> but I'm ready to hop back on the train. Still <laughs> the best mid laner. He gets gangplank. His gangplank should in be illegal. In all of Oceania. Um, we're, we actually need to take some time before getting into game number two, ladies and gentlemen, just because we do need to find the creeps that have been <laughs> destroyed. We just don't have that many on backup, so he's just gone through most of them. We do need to get them back. So we've got so, some stuff. In the meantime, let's have a chat to our casters and do some more questions <laughs> as we bring them up on your screen. We we actually asked you guys during the week to ask us everything. So hello, Pastry Time. Hello, Rusty. Hi, guys. How are you guys doing? Yeah, sick. After that game, I'm doing awesome. <laughs> nice. All right, let's get more straight those, into please. the questions. I think it's going to be Atlas helping me out today. Yeah. So as we bring the first one up onto the screen. Yep. So what gear do you guys use, such as headsets, monitors, and cameras, says Taco16? Well, I think we have it. no idea. I can answer this one. The ones the producer tells me to. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. So um, can we have Benji like... Our uh, headsets are uh, Audio-Technica headsets. Our cameras are a mix of Sony PTZ cameras and JVC cameras. We have five in total. Uh, we use three of them currently for the OPL. One is a robot and spins around. That's why you got the panoramic view, I think, <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. Uh, our monitors are just generic monitors. You know, anything you guys would use at home. Our video mixer is a TriCaster 8000. I am assured that it is... Super good. Beast. It's awesome. Uh, our audio mixer is a Beringer X32 Compact. Uh, the control room has 12 computers in it, and there's lots of back black magic gear that supports our core equipment. Whatever that means. I'm, yeah. If you guys understood that, that at home, congratulations, because we didn't. And the yeah. TLDR, was, we, we use exactly what he said in the question. Yep. Yeah, we, <laughs> use, we, use we personally stuff. use yeah. Yeah, headsets. Yeah. Headsets. <laughs> These are good, though. <laughs> yeah. All right, so next question from Challenger, <laughs> Challenger Toucan. Whose hair is the softest? Hashtag I'm OPL. It's not mine. Ooh, this is actually a really Rusty's. good question. Definitely Rusty's. I'm Frost Gruen's. It is She's not on the cast, Ooh. but her hair is like what, if you picture a baby duck, like, and how soft the feathers are on that, like, that is Frost's hair. It is amazing to buy. Now I'm just picturing her as a baby duck. That is, <laughs> yeah. It's a weird image. I, we need to work Does out what baby duck that? is in Iceland. Yeah. I'm not debating that. I think she has very soft hair. Weirdly I was just going to say have. Rusty because yeah. he uses the least product. I out use of the least at the moment. Really? Yeah, because it's Julian's and I don't want to steal <laughs> all of it. <laughs> Thank you, Pastry Time, Wait, for what? hair product. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have a fight after this, but we'll just make sure we get this segment through. Uh, this next one's from Matthew Stewart. Don't know who that guy is, Who's but he that? looks like an idiot. Will Benji <laughs> pay for some English lessons for Spawn? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so without going into too much depth, uh, Fish has a great accent that he does not use on camera. Uh, <laughs> he, he is from Singapore, and he, he does have quite a unique accent. So if you're ever around him, uh, ask him to speak to you the way he normally speaks, because uh, it is a little bit different. So pot and kettle somewhere around here, <laughs> Fish. I think that's a little bit unique. But yesterday I could not speak on broadcast, and I apologise for that. I'm good banter, today. producer. Good I, th banter. I think it's endearing. You know, I think it's endearing. Yeah, you just say that because that used to be you. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> next question. Let's go into that one. <laughs> next, <laughs> next Viho, which is difficult to say. How many years or practice does it take to be at the level of legacy? Ooh, I think we're all going to have different opinions. I actually want to go around the horn with this one. Pastry, what's your take on this question? How many years of practice? For me? Yeah. To be on the level of legacy? Uh, well, like, in <laughs> general. Do we have enough like time? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> um, like, for like an individual player? Yeah. Like a new player? Yeah. All right, cool. Um... You'd have to talk to them. I honestly think if you're really dedicated, you have a good attitude, and you uh, understand like how to improve effectively, I'm going to say three years. All right. Rusty, what do you think? Approximately six months, depending on how seriously you take it. Yeah. Like plain and simple. If well, you have the right attitude, you really want to improve, you look at your games, how you're winning, why you're losing, and actually take every possible step forward, you can probably be a pro player in the OPL within about six months. Yeah, I actually think that it's entirely based on who you are, right? So, like, whether you have the reaction time, I think a lot of it is to do with, like, raw natural talent. And if you have that, then I agree with Rusty. I think it takes about six months. But yeah. I think that you need to have Some that Some things you can't level. teach, right? Exactly. And I'm a perfect example. 
The other thing I will say, uh, have you got anything to add? Six months. Yeah, so, so. I, I was going to say greatness breeds greatness. There's a reason that legacy Chiefs are always near the top. You know, there's a reason that Diewolves, even though they change over players, now they're getting towards the top. It's because when you play with great players all the time, you actually get better. They elevate you when you live in an environment like legacy. Like you, I use Rusty, Zach, as an example all the time. If he wanted to be a pro player, he still could. If he was on Legacy's lineup, he would be a fantastic mid laner. So give him a couple of months, he would be back there in no time. And he's currently master tier, which gives you, I guess, a rough idea of whereabouts that skill level is to get you back to the top. It's not just playing with them. It's when you play against really strong players. Yeah. Well, you learn a lot that way. Yeah, and this actually comes down to sort of the Oceanian problem as well. Is like sort of this, this issue that we can't actually scrim against a lot of the, the higher level teams. But we are going to go to the next question, as the producer oh, no. here is letting me know. As Day Day is going to say... What are all your ranks in league? I'm not telling. <laughs> <laughs> Starting with Atlas. Gold, gold five. Gold all right, five. Fish, where are you at the moment? I'm plat three. Plat three, working hard. Yeah, yep. working really hard. Uh, I am currently platinum one. Um, yep. I'll just leave it there. <laughs> uh, pastry? Uh, I think silver two sixty something LP right now. So trying to get back to silver Who's one. Who's counting, mate? Who's counting? <laughs> Me. Uh, I am. <laughs> and Rusty, where are you at the moment? Uh, diamond on all of my accounts. Yeah, I uh, peaked out at Masters at the end of preseason yeah. this time around. Can be in challenger whenever he wants to. I hate him for it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and the last question is about to come up. Okay, so the next one comes in from Lol Ties. What role would the behind the scenes staff do on camera? Oh, Which awesome. production slash league ops role would the on-camera people do? All right, this is really, really easy. Whoa. Benji would be a play-by-play -play caster. He would. You know how I know? Because I was a lead caster for a very, very long time. And every week, I would be like, you know what? Max isn't feeling great today, Ben. What are we going to do? And he'd be like, put me in. Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, no pastry I time needs to go an appointment. Oh, put me in. Like, yeah. We need to try cast. I'll do it. Like, Can we actually have a serious conversation about who's casting today? Because we never yeah. could. If I go to the bathroom, like... A little bit before a broadcast, Ben would be like, "Where's Max? Am I casting? Yeah. Like, <laughs> get me in there, sub me in, coach." Uh, I would also say that Morawi, uh, our League Ops guy, I, I don't know if you guys agree. I think he would be a pretty decent color caster. He knows a fair bit yeah. of about the game. He is an Oriana one trick as well, so I, I think that that would help him out a little bit. Uh, so yeah, apparently Benji Mark cast is on its way. Yeah. Um, what would Ringus do? <laughs> <laughs> I'd go with play by play. Yeah. Uh, he yeah. hosts like the banter lounge. Oh, like. Actually, yeah. he would be a really good host. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. And yeah. A Ray would be like fish. Whatever fish does. <laughs> 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 uh, what would we do in there? Uh, I'm going to. I, I wouldn't observe because I'd I think, just fall asleep. <laughs> I think I'd be Benji because I'm the only one that knows. No, you'd be that. the vision mixer. Yeah, yeah you'd no press the button. Be the oh, no. I'm Benji. I'm the yeah. one that gets to yell at you. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm the one. No, we would <laughs> add a director. That would be pastry. So pastry would be director. You'd be vision mixer. Uh, DJ Rusty would have to be audio, <laughs> which leaves me as spectator and Max as league ops. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, Good luck everyone. Which means we're probably yeah. in a little bit of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are going to wave goodbye to our casters. So see you guys in a couple of minutes and jump back to the serious business, which is, of course, the game that we have of hand. Direwolves currently are up 1-0 versus Avant. Avant came very close. That's where I kind of want to hone in on. With an extra ban, is this Avant's game to really step up and prove that they can compete with the top of the OPL? I think, I think definitely. After that performance, especially if Stark is going to be more comfortable to get in there and auto attack, which he probably will be without Fantix running around with 400 billion CS, a whole heap of damage and barrels everywhere. I just think if Stark can do that and they can teamfight the same way, then yeah, I think definitely. I think it's going to be a huge thing for them, especially because in the last game, they're on red side. So they had the counter pick for mid lane and it didn't work out. Now that they have that extra band, they don't have to worry too much about counter picking. They can pick their own team comp and work around that. And the other thing I want to focus on is that mid lane because, you know, you just mentioned it, the counter pick. Triple did have a good game, but maybe not to the level of Fantix. Is this Fantix out of the world good? Is it a one champion thing? And Triple, that, that's a pretty impressive game, right? That, that's yeah. him play, performing well. Yeah, no, Triple definitely played fantastically. I think that... I struggle to say that the Direwolves in the mid lane are past all of their problems from uh, uh, last week just because Fantix is so incredibly good on this one champion. I want Fantix to show us that he can bring out the Twisted Fate and win a game with it. Can bring out the rest of the champions and win games for me to really be sold. For me, it's not just the mid lane triple that was really impressive for me for Avant. I think all of the lanes did incredibly well. Even the jungle did really well from Avant in the early stages of the game. But what stood out to me was both the solo laners, triple... And the top lane, Rain Rain Tier, was yep. doing really, really good. The two new players coming into the lineup were doing fantastic. And if they can mix that well together with the team, 
it's going to be even good, even better for them in this game. Well, we will see if that is the case because currently Die Wolves are one nothing up, but we do have game two ready for you right now. So it's pastry time and Rusty to take us into it. Thank you, guys. And we are back for our second game between the Dials and Avant. We had a long first game there, Rusty. 45 minutes approximately for Dials to clinch game number one. Avant, definitely a hard-fought one. Have to think momentum is important here, but it could. it's kind of shaping up to be a 2-1 already, it almost feels like. It's a, okay, so it's a very crazy thing, right? AV, and it was mentioned on the desk, they've got their two new players, two standout players in that game. But because they're new players, it's a very solo queue mentality of how do we actually translate this lead to the rest of the game? If they can work that out in game number two, maybe it's drafting. Things could go a lot better for well, AV in the end. Certainly could, and we are going to get three bans from Avant this time. They will not miss one like they did in the first game. So we'll see what champ select for game two brings us as we have, of course, swap sides around GP, the first ban for Avant. Maybe could have been the first ban last game, but definitely going to respect the pick now. You would hope that the GP was banned away before coming into this champion select, and they do, they do so. Yep. So smartly taking that one off Fantix. The question isn't about his champion pool either. It's mm. about, is he at GP level on these other champions? Can yep. he actually be that ridiculous on anything else that he plays? I feel that way, honestly, about kind of a number of the dialogues now. Again, some newer players. We talk about Sybil's Elise. That's sort of been the same thing. Ray's for me has his select few champions. Even though he is a good player, I feel like the dialogues are still reaching up to their potential. because, And I think yeah. that explains a lot of their inconsistency for me. And even Kuden with Braum yeah. as well. I feel like if he's not playing a passive champion, he's Braum. And Alistar's kind of shifted away from the meta. Morgana has picked up in popularity. Can he actually keep up with the meta? Or did the meta just suit him at the start? Well, I guess we'll find out as we do continue through the draft. Quinn banned away by Avant. That's taken away from Sharp. For your in Italy, though, the bans from Direwolf. So very similar look to game one already. Yeah, this will be quite standard in the way of drafting. And I guess the big question for AV is, do they focus jungle with their first pick, similar to what Direwolves did, actually picking up Elise in their first rotation? And that was the big question mark that we raised. Never mind. Yep, just going to ban it instead. I actually quite like that play for Avant. And I guess Dialves are left with a pretty obvious thing sticking out. Kog'Maw and Lulu, the two obvious champions left available. Do you ban one? Do you leave them both up? It's a tough choice here for the last ban. Yeah, it's a very tough choice, and they ban wow. neither. Okay, so they ban the Callista. I, and it's a good ban. Stark's a good Callista. Yeah. And that has to give Lulu over. Yeah, to so what it does is it forces the Lulu to be picked, knowing that they can't get Lulu and Kog'Maw in the same rotation. Yep. Gives Direwolves the option to take the Kog'Maw, but doesn't actually just give them the option. It forces them yeah. into locking in Kog'Maw because AV's team composition already has a Lulu. So instead of drafting themselves into an eventual hole where they're going to be against a ridiculous team composition, they should ideally pick up Kog'Maw for themselves so AV don't run away. I mean, we saw it very rarely drop through a draft in our first game, so perhaps the teams aren't comfortable running it just yet, but the power of the pick is undeniable. Even though we have shifted a little bit of power down in 6-4, champion's still absolutely crazy. So Dialves, at least, they're taking their time here. They've got Graves hovered right now. Not sure we'll see a return of the Graves to the jungle just yet, but you have to know, in the back of their minds, Lulu Cog, I don't think we can give it to them. Graves still does a lot of damage. He is still definitely worth respecting as a jungler, so it wouldn't be too bad of a pick. Can also, worst case scenario, flex to the top lane. There's nope. That makes a bit more sense. Yeah. I like the Poppy, especially if they're expecting a cog, and there is, of course, the Braum going to be picked up for Kuden. Saw the bot and I was like, that doesn't look like Braum. Might have, might have clicked the wrong champion. Uh, they're next to each other, Maybe, right? yeah, same letter, right? So, yeah, they definitely do pick up that Braum. Sharp going to be able to pick up Poppy as well is what that means in the top lane. And so they revealed their hand with top laners early. Perhaps it's the assumption that Lulu will be the champion up there. Mm -hmm. And that Triple might not be a Lulu player. Yeah, maybe not. I mean, doesn't suit his MO so far. Lots of Assassin games from what we've seen. Definitely seen mostly Zed with one other champion that does escape me at this stage. But Avant, again, they know. Do we pick Cog? Are we getting baited into a potential Cog pick here? Both teams are aware of the power of the pick. But they've given it over. But right? Avant, they just can't. I mean, you can't stop now. You have to take it, right? Morgana's already locked in. I have to think they're taking Cog. That is, it. like, for three champions to be locked in in your first and second draft, you've just given AV the comp of the gods. Yeah. It's the Juggermore comp already established. Direwolves, their team composition can go two ways. Either you don't fight the Cogmore at all, and they can just be this wrecking ball that goes around and you just avoid them on the outskirts, or you just design yourselves to kill them. Yep. Just outright take them out. And already having the Braum, already having the Poppy in place, signals that you want to kill the heck out of them. Yeah, I think so too. And I mean, we already saw Sharp on the Poppy was the Radius slaying Yordle, but that was Callista. It was a pretty different animal yeah. to Cogmore in more ways than one. Dialves, though, 
Trying to sort out these next few picks. Raze does seem to stick to his comfort picks a lot. He's hovering Lucian for the time being. Always impressed by his Corky. Always impressed by his Ezreal. Might go to something different here, but they already know it's going to be a tough lane. Lucian makes a lot of sense. He is with the Braum after all. Their laning phase would be quite all right because of that. And in saying that, Morgana, as we mentioned in the first game, negates a lot of Braum. So it might not be the optimal strategy. As that makes more sense. Yeah, there's some flicking around of champions here, but Corky, Gragas do seem to be the sensible choices. Gragas is going to go into the jungle. Corky can be flexed, of course. We've seen Fantix play it a number of times. It is a big carry champion. Can farm up on it, do lots of damage late game. But Rays, of course, are great Corky. Dial is, in my opinion, one of the better teams when they flex this pick. Absolutely, and there is still a lot of merit to the Dire Wolves draft. And they do look like they've still got a very strong draft in place. It's just every single time my eyes gravitate back towards AV. The three champions they've got are ridiculous. They can already consolidate this fact. You could pick an assassin to split push if you want, mm -hmm. have a second threat in that middle lane. There's no reason even not to be a Zed if you were going to go like that as triple again. Suits his play style. Seems to be quite proficient on that champion. And then really, to round out the composition, even a Rek'Sai would be great. Yeah, plenty of options certainly here. Chelby feels like he can play a lot of the different junglers, even though he prefers to be aggressive where possible. Running out of time though, Rek'Sai does seem to be the pick here for Avant. Three seconds left. I don't think it's going to be Shivana. They will move yeah, back to Trundle, right. and Triple actually will take the Lulu. Yeah, so Triple picking up the Lulu, of course. The one other champion was Victor that he did yes. play, so Control Mage still shows that he can play the champion. That's the important thing. I, d I don't know. I like this draft from AV so much. Yeah, I mean... They have so much disengage available to them, or at least protection for their one moving powerhouse that is going to be Stark. I mean, if you, you know, ask the team, hey, it's a blind pick game, what do you want in this meta? I think plenty of teams would happily pick this team comp. And Ivart and I've got it here with bands all in place for both teams. Dials are trying to sort out this last pick. Could be a mid lane, it could be an AD carry. They know their solo lanes pretty much, because I doubt it's going to be Trundle mid. Give them the TF. Kuden's having some fun. TF, yeah, definitely could be an option here, but maybe just gives Rezi Ezreal and takes Corky. We saw the Ari hover already. Again, I feel that the Dials have a plan. I just, I guess it awaits to be seen how effective their plan is going to be against this Cogmore. Yeah, I. Direwolves team composition, again, we mentioned it, is still strong in its own right. Mm -hmm. And it is likely that it's going to be Fantix playing that mid lane Corky, of course, has had a standout performance when he plays it here and there. GP Corky, very strong champions at the moment, also. No surprise to see that. Yep, there's Ezreal, the last pick. So this is a pretty classic Dial switcheroo. You know, flex the Corky, maybe pretend that you're going to play it, and then give Raze his favorite champion in Ezreal. And that man does go off on it. So. Even though the matchup, I think it's going to be a touch awkward, despite the power of Braum in the lane. Ray should be able to navigate well. Yeah. And the only worry is, hey, what happens when we get to mid to late game and Corky Lulu steamrolls us? Because that's always everyone's worry against this team comp. There's a couple questions, though, on the side of AV. Less so about their drafting now, more so about Stark. Struggled to hit people in the last mm -hmm. game. He was very scared. He was very respectful of his opposition team. And it didn't do the damage that they were looking for. Fantix went off this time around. He is the source of most of their damage, and if he's not putting in work, he'll struggle. The other thing to me is Triple. Yep. Triple's playing a control mage, and not just a control mage, but one that's reliant on buffing up your team, less so than yourself. So we're going to see a new side to Triple. We're going to see a new side to Stark. And AV as a whole, they've got a big strat. Yeah, and again, I feel like Kog'Maw dropped through because Lulu was banned. That maybe is the key now. You just want Lulu Kog, and if you can't get Lulu, then okay, you give it up. Dials, though, they gifted them the team comp. They took the Lulu, challenged them to take the Kog'Maw, and Dials said, nah, don't want it. And you can see the amazing comp of have there on the top of your screen. If you think Kog's going to pull through here, if the Juggermore can get good, then use the hashtag AV win and see if they can force a third. Or if you think the Dials will have another well-fought gaming Get the sweep 2-0. Use the hashtag DW. And don't forget, of course, use the hashtag IMOPO for all your general Twitter needs. And hope to hear, you guys, hope to hear from you guys out there in the Twitterverse because it's been an awesome game so far. And we could have two more. Yeah, I did see one tweet on that hashtag IMOPO that said, Game 1 was basically the Michael Bay <laughs> film of OPL games. So that basically summed it up. And I do hope we see something similar to that again. Certainly do. It was a fun one to watch. But we are going to move out onto the rift for our second one here, Avant over on that blue side. So we are going to check out the Keystone Masteries. Once again, nothing unusual here. Nah, nothing crazy. Morgana, of course, Thunderlords. We've explained that as well. Just does a bit of extra damage with the puddle. Very easy to proc as well. Mm -hmm. Things pretty standard across the board. See Stark again, actually. Ooh, this is an interesting fight. Destiny One's getting the better of the money. money. But Raze is doing damage. Nice binding there from Destiny. Ooh. 
nails it as the last mystic shot. Destiny, I think he has enough time to go back home. And Rose does get the ward down that he wants. Destiny actually pops the counter ward down as well. So Destiny, out with an early win, just collects a little bit of farm. Just a bit of cash in the bank. Of course, we mentioned this in game one. Potions cost a bit more now. No one's going to be able to pick up a cheeky potion just yet. Still, it's one of those things. Raze was asserting dominance to get a ward down. Gives over a bit of cash. It's also a decent fake now that they actually are moving in for the lane swap here. Yeah. I mean, instantly you saw Raze and Kudan just go straight to that top side. And you know Ivana setting, setting down bottom side looking for those Krugs. Dives will also be taking the Krugs, but it's theirs. He's going to mean non-standard lanes this time around. I feel like the Direwolves really thrive in standard lanes, but Avant took it to them in the first game, so I can't fault them for the lane swap. Yeah, but Avant aren't going to be prepared for this lane swap just yet. They're definitely not going to be double jungling for extended periods. You can see it's just a leash that Rainty is going to give Chelby, and he'll get the full experience to level two. So he'll make it up top, but very quickly he's going to realize all is not as it seems. It is not. And he'll run away. Bandix and Triple also going to get isolated now. We'll see if either of them can find an edge early on in the matchup as Reintir doesn't really like what he sees. It's two members of Direwolves now up in that top side. We do have a tweet from Anthony Skibinski. Unbench the Benji. Apparently we've got to sub him in. If I go halfway through the cast, you know what happened, guys. The producer has taken too much control. I'm scared. I'm potentially worried. I don't know what casting with Benji would be like. <laughs> There's no Jace in the game, so he could be safe. As Shelby does manage to get those wolves. Level 2 for Reintir and Shelby. As Kudin did try and sneak in for a bit of denial. But the double jungling now starting for Avant. They're not going to be too far behind. But they do have a slow start here to this particular lane swap. Yeah, it's just a slow start. It's a little bit less proficient. Things will settle down perfectly fine, though. I think Chelby's going to be the recipient of a little bit more experience overall. So nothing massive lost, nothing massive gained from Direwolves, but they do get the jump on information, so they're able to set up more effectively. And perhaps Sybil gets an advantage from this, or even evens out, yep, which next. means range is behind. Yep, and we can see three members pushing for either side now, but Sybil is going to go join over, perhaps. And his tower should fall relatively quickly. Reigns are actually doing decent damage with the Trundle W. Plenty of extra attack speed for him. I uh, have to imagine that these towers are just going to fall at relatively the same time, which means where do the teams go after that? Once that initial outer turret gold's been picked up. Yeah, and the real question is, like, where else do they go? Are they going to continue to push? Are they going to swap and actually just give up opposite turrets? Or do they want to try what Legacy did yesterday and get standard lanes and actually break the lane swap? Of course, Cogmore... Morgana is not the best lane, but they really did want to hide their standard lanes and not put the Ezreal Brom against it. Perhaps just to break open the map a little bit further. But once Raze has a tier, he can afford to sit back a little bit more and just start stacking up and farming. I actually kind of like just that part of it. Ezreal getting a tier nice and early because of that swap is adorable from the Direwolves. But Raze is going to move down to that bottom side now. Rainter is staying and they can't see him there. So for the time being, it seems like we are going to get 2v1 lanes. Yeah, so this is what top laners always do, though. They get as much farm as they possibly can out of it, kill as many minions off as you can, so that by the time direwolves get down here and start trying to push themselves, it might not be as quick or efficient as they would have liked. T Rain's hit, just like that, is going to back off as well. Level 3 now, so did well to uh, collect the farm while he could, I suppose. It's cute, and also level 3. Going to go roaming and try and get some vision down. Raze, they're going to try and hang this as much as he can. He's going to push back by the looks of things. You can see Stark and Destiny, not messing around, just going to keep pushing right away. Yeah, and both junglers matching as well. Gragas is going to work bottom. Rain tier should do the smart thing and peace out. As should Sharp, both recalling now. Shelby's actually not going to know where the hell Ooh. he is. Tremor sense, not working that time. Sharp standing still for a recall. He's going to make it back in time. So his poor top lane is going to feel a little bit stranded. Mm -hmm. And not in the normal way they do there in the top island. That's Triple and Fandix trading back nicely, but good little trade there from Triple. Keeping up nice and even in CS. Seems like our isolated mid lane's just sort of turned into a farm lane. There's Avant, three strong here. Going to start pushing down this top outer. Lulu in mid lane, breaks into a farm lane. Shocking. Surprise, yeah. <laughs> to say the least. Now, this is where the real question does happen is Diewolves and AV, they're going to get their second outer respective turrets, and yes, they match the swap. But from here... Where do the top laners go now that they're zoned? Do they just start sneaking jungle cams desperately? 
Do they join their team and just hyper push a second turret down? Do they even look for a cheeky gank mid lane as we saw once yesterday also? There's options this time around. They're not just being completely left to their own... De well, they're being left to their own devices. Just not bashed on by the opposite team. Yeah, got a little bit of wiggle room perhaps as there are going to be the towers being traded. Avant are continuing to push though, so they did get a yeah. pretty fast push onto the outer. They're still going though, so yeah. this is actually good for AV. They don't have enough minions potentially to commit to this. So I'm going to try and keep them back. Only two cards to creep left. Avant going to get a good chunk of damage down here. But Sharp, you can see, can't really keep them up forever. Shelby actually faking the dive there. Frantic's got nice and low there in that mid lane. Seems like Triple had a nice little trade down. Dive's also going to continue to push. Rainsy going to be forced to flash. Nice pressure there from Sybil. And now it's Diables have the track on this turret. Yeah, so they're actually continuing to match. But this time around, Diables, they push Rainsier away. Poppy was being very cute with the wave clear. And this is something that I like from AV. What they're doing now is getting the Rift Herald. And what they already did was reset top lane. So the big stack of minions couldn't be frozen. Both teams getting what they're looking for. And no turrets going down. But the Rift Herald will definitely favor AV if they continue to push turrets. Yep, Dials, of course, will make the obvious trade. They'll take the dragon. While Avant are going back and kind of resetting their map a touch. You can see Raze and Sybil going to be able to do this fairly confidently. Kudan will join in. Maybe it's to help tank it out. But Sybil wants, probably wants to go back to base anyway. Prong going to help out. And Sybil should be able to smite that down. Doesn't use it, though. Wants to save it for something maybe more important. But seven and a half minutes in, blue buffs are back. And we have a very wide open map now, Rusty. Yeah, it's definitely an open map. And all I can really say about this is that both of these teams evidently have been watching IEM. <laughs> They've got a very good grasp, at the very least, or an understanding on how they're meant to do the lane swap. Efficiency doesn't exactly matter this time around. Both teams extended the lane swaps out. So yeah, it is wide open. Top lane and bottom lane turrets respectively are able to be killed quite handily with one big push. The question comes down to can that Rift Herald buff actually get anything done? Well, could just be some extra money for Shelby, which I'm sure he's not ashamed of regardless. Blue buff though is going to go over to Fantix, who now has the Sheen. With the Phage component sitting in his inventory. On the other side, though, Triple working on that Rod of Ages first. Already has the Catalyst on the Blasting one, so very efficient farming from both these mid laners. I guess sort of what we expected, given that it is Lulu versus Corky. Well, I mean, look at Fantix. Like, he's just sneaking over to Raptors as well here and there. He remembers. Yeah, he just hasn't forgotten. Like, <laughs> he can't remove that concept out of his brain at the moment. Even on Corky, it's still kind of easy to take those three small raptors, so he'll continue to do so. Oh, don't worry. Fantix will find a way on almost any champion to farm the raptors. As Shelby level 7, going to chase down Kud and only level 4. Braum is uh, very unhealthy. Raze, though, he's going to actually move in. Stun does land onto Shelby, but Destiny threatening with the binding. Going to force the dials back to their tier 2 turret. And Sharp is kind of overextended in top as well. But Rek he can afford to be, that's the thing. So he knows where Rek'Sai is, and he's able to stay out here as far as he would like, as long as he doesn't die one-on-one. -on -one. And that's the only real concern that you would have for Poppy right now. The reason that Shelby is also predictably bottom is because he's the one with the Rift Herald buff. And this is a big stack of minions about to crash. Ooh, Raze does hit a binding, but damage not really there for the follow-up. Two Shot Barrage will be burnt to try and clear that wave out. Gets thin to touch, but another but nice again. binding. Kuden, forced to use stand behind me, and that's a huge wave here. Shelby, no buff yet, but more than enough minions to try and take this out. I think this is gonna die. That's a hell of a lot of minions. I would be surprised if it doesn't. Fight, perhaps. They're gonna try and fight for it, but the turret's already dead. Shelby, low though. Teleport's coming in. A little too aggressive, but the TP is gonna come out for Dial or Sharp. Gonna look to try and make something happen here. Dials need to convert, but Shelby just ulties out. And Dials get nothing off that. They actually just waste the teleport and they lose the turret. So that was a very expected rotation out of Di uh, out of Avant. Shelby spent a lot of time sitting around that area of the map. Sybil's not in place in time to actually prevent it from going down. And that's the first real mistake that we've seen so far. Yeah, and that's a nice advantage for Avant. They'll take the turret lead now. Three to two up in turrets with about a 1,000 up in gold as a result. Fantix with the package in mid lane. He's going to get aggressive onto Triple. He's waiting for his jungler to come in for it. Sybil does not overcommit to the dive, though. Fantix gets great pressure down, though. Yeah, great pressure and a lot of damage as well and truly on Triple at the moment, who 
is drawing attention from his own allies to try and push this wave out and help him get back, but needs to respect Civil here. Civil Flash uses the ulti, fakes it out, forces the summoner from Shelby. Triple now has to pop the wild growth. Oh, nice wow, binding. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> Woo! The flanking Morgana. What are you doing the over there? That's a good question, to be honest. Avant's map movement certainly coming up trumps. It's been very crisp in this lane swap, but the Dials are going to group in. They know they've weakened members in the mid lane. Destiny, that's not, not a safe place to stand, but Rain Tears here to clear this out. Yeah, so that was actually really well done by Sybil earlier also, forcing summoners out of Chelby just by using the body slam. The ultimate still connected, still got the Lulu ult. And the only unfortunate thing is they couldn't translate that into the mid turret at all. And they do have to go back themselves, which gives Stark and Destiny enough time to work this middle lane turret themselves, if they would choose. Well, Fanatics has gone back, but Trinity Force not there just yet. Sork Truth and a Dagger are actually his purchases. As Kuhn going to assist Sybil here, pull that wave off the turret. Avant, of course, don't want to get too aggressive, so they simply push the wave in and leave it there. Uh, Raze does have a CS lead, though. He's actually been farming that empty lane. He's pretty close to Iceborne Gauntlet. So it does feel like two late game carries in some senses are getting the farm they want. But Protect Cogmore versus Ezreal. I think I know who I want my farm on. It all well, depends on the time have, of the game True. as well, Pastry Time. Because the two items, though a Cogmore is good, it doesn't mean an Ezreal is by any means bad. We are looking at the new Muramana also. That's true. Oh, Fantix. That's a lot of damage. It is quite, but actually, well, Fantix. Who are you talking about? <laughs> Fantix did more. Certainly maybe. did. Dial's here again. Civil looks for Stark. Great alley oop. And Stark insta flashes oh, out. Now Fantix eats a binding. Damage out from there. The pillar's going to force the flash. He has been pop Rain here. He really wants it, but he's going to get stunned up by concussive blows. As now Razor's joining in the fight. Shelby going to get stunned up. That could be enough. The Wild Growth going to pop it in, though. True Shot Barrage. Not quite there. And Raze, he's just forward to try and claim a kill. And somehow nobody dies. And very impressively, nobody dies also, but Diawals are the ones with the numbers and health advantage, as so many people from AV have to go back. But all of this movement, all of this damage that we're seeing put down onto one another has generally been non-impactful. Even now, there's still two people to defend this, and they can't push. And so we reset. Yeah, Triple's going to stay, and I feel like it's just a product of the lane swap, to be honest. Like... These lanes are very long, carries want to go farm them, they're relatively safe once they push back towards you, and you sort of pendulum back farm to and forth along the map. Well it is, it's a case of freeze and push. Yeah. But at every single moment now, because mid lane is there in the outer remaining, it's freeze and freeze, or push and push, but no one's actually hitting the turret, because they're all in the same lane. Yeah. Which is the lane they want to be in, mid lane, sharp though. Could be in a spot of bother. Nice ulti only gets Destiny though. Chelby in good position. Nice dash and flash there from Sharp to try and get himself to safety. But he is going to get knocked up. He'll take He'll his buckler. Fine. He's Poppy. Certainly is fine. Yeah, he's Poppy. You said it. There's no way to kill Poppy. That's I like how sure. we change the passive and it still feels like she has the same yeah. old passive. I uh. feel like it's still a hidden passive on Poppy. Yeah. And they should just rename the passive to, oh wait, it's Poppy. <laughs> because everybody does that. You know, like you go hit the Poppy, oh, we can kill this guy, he's way out of position. Hang on, he's Poppy. Yep. I regret everything. I'm playing her old tricks still. Sharp. Ooh, good pillar. She'll oh. be back in for it. No W yet. Still 3v1. Oh. Are we going to be Poppy again? Sharp now maybe a little too much damage. But he's actually going to go in onto Destiny. I think Morgana popped the ulti, but Sharp really fancies the kill. He knows he's going to go down. Who's going to get the kill? It will be Shelby. He claims first blood. And so they're actually still matching lanes. Diewolves have grouped up with Fantix this time to push the bottom turret. Without that kill being considered, they are ahead of AV with map movement. Of course, keep in mind this will still get traded. Diewolves going for the dragon. I would imagine AV go for the Rift Herald. The only bonus is that kill. Yeah, and maybe the one turret they got in bottom side as well. They got the tier 2 push down. Dials weren't in time to defend it. And as they do take the top tier 2 now, Avant are up a turret. And that's pretty much our gold lead. With a bit of first blood gold as well. It's been a very macro heavy game here between these two teams. A far cry from our first game between the two. It's funny, we're looking at like, again, it is a macro heavy game and I completely agree. But the adaptations that the teams have made is entirely to be macro. Like, there was... Uh, sorry, the recurve bow before the Gwynzu's Rage Blade was completed by Stark because he was going to continue sitting in side lanes, just continuing to farm, and accelerated his build further because once the Gwynzu's was done, he's ridiculous right now. 
On the flip side, I guess, they've also got a ZZ Rock Portal as the only item that Reindeer had for quite some time. That was actually his first Rush item, and that comes back to being macro-focused. He's stuck with the Rage Blade, able to clear up pretty quickly. He'll be waiting in base, though. He's going to move over to a tunnel. Yeah. It's just the farm alarm, though, this time. Going to make sure his wrapped as a protected from Fantix. Destiny going to help him clear out the ward. And it looks like Avant just cleansing their jungle. Dial's vision. It's Fantix now with that Trinity Force quite strong with that particular pickup, but triple no slouch. Again, nice and even on CS. Need to see Lodron and the Raw plus the CDR boots. Feels like everyone's ready to go here. And again, it's been a bit more of a patient game. 16 and a half minutes in. And Sharp and Reintier at it again, but this is not quite the same matchup. No, Reintier still seems relatively happy, though, in regards to his power in this lane. Sharp already showing no signs of backing down. And at the moment, if you were Diables, you want separation between Stark and Triple. Fantix is massive. He has his Trinity Force, Sork Shoes, and his package. And so if he can separate them, even in the same lane, just use the package and separate them, then Fantix will be strong as he is. 100% considering going on Destiny right now. Yep. Just so you know, it wasn't all Raptors. That was the bait. Well, he does get his favorite food at least. The Raptors will go over to Fantix. And Stark, kind of stuck on wave clear duty right now. I feel like we've seen this a lot with Kog'Maw. You get the Gintus and your job is like, you know what, stick mid, and when the wave comes, hit W. Well, the Gintus gives you the wave clear, yeah. so... Yeah, it's not actually that bad of an idea. Maybe not with Fantix playing that far forward. Stark does have to be careful, it's quite fragile. But he's gonna be fine. His dials are still trying to get this turret in mid. Fantix forced to use the package just for fun, because it was running out. And Raze with the gauntlet now up as well. Muramana on the way, actually must be quite close with a the pickaxe there in the inventory. They do do nice turret damage, but again, the wave is here for Avant. Yeah, and now we're genuinely watching the Oceanic a ramp, <laughs> as it has been aptly named many times. Well, turret actually going to get a little low. Chobi going to try and fight them off it, though. Does burn actually nothing, just a nice unborrow, but mm -hmm. cooldown saved by everyone. Felt like that moment where it's like, see if they make a mistake. <laughs> Nobody used any <laughs> buttons. Like, okay, I guess not. Did anyone use anything? No? Try again in a minute. <laughs> See how it goes. Diwals are still the Check ones the with A4. control, what does though, it say? to be fair. So they may be able to chip away at this turret. It's forcing AV to engage. They could make a mistake and engage too aggressively. Well, Stark actually forward now, but he's ate, ate, eaten quite a lot of poke. Excuse me. It's also forcing Reintier to come up. So Sharp getting some free time in the top side. Actually has the 30 CS lead currently. The Diwals... I think happy to play the ARAM for now. Again, there's not really too much to accomplish on the side of the map right now. Yeah, so that's, that's the thing. Diwals can stay here, and they're actually doing the right thing by being in this lane. They're waiting for bottom to push out and be a big wave where they can collect the farm. And they've also brought rain to here. So Sharp's pushing. Sharp's finding advantages. Oh! Shelby. Very nice from Simple. Oh, they can they lock him down? They can! They get the tunnel stop. And there's the ulti out from Kudin. Shelby that will flash into the Raptor pit and live. But that was well executed by Dyrolls to almost get a kill. It was, and they did still force Triple's ultimate on this Lulu, so Kog'Ma is a lot less safe, and that does force even Stark's recall just from catching out Shelby. And that's going to give them the tower they wanted. The ARAM may be broken now as the Dyrolls, with a nice little siege play, able to even that gold right back up, even the turrets back up as well, and break the crucial center of the map sharp. It's going to finally leave Reintier alone and gift him a bit of CS back. But Poppy got a lot of free time just collecting gold. And the Diables, once again, seems like they're always farming efficiently. Absolutely. If there's one thing Diables do, let's get those minions. Civil Force to retreat, though. A little too much there for the Diables, I think. Looking for red buff as well. It's greedy. Yeah, definitely. But they do escape with their livestock. They're going to get himself the buff. And Dragon up in a minute 30. Diables with two already. Could be looking at a snowball that out of control. You can see the backs have come in. Marumana now completed for Ray's BF Sword in the pocket now for Fantix. And this should be mid, though, for AV sooner or later. And this comes down to how minion control works. And Fantix is going to have to be the hero of this middle lane to try and keep it alive because it's going to take an awful long time for Ray's to deal with what was like a 30 stack, probably, of minions. Yeah, does use the two-shot barrage, but sort of just trimming the hedge at this point. Fantix, though, with a bit of help from Kudin, does keep his turret alive. Avant did not group to try and finish that one off. And with Dragon up, you know Dives are playing to this bottom side of the map anyway. Sharp's still top, has a Sheen. Icebond's probably on the way if he doesn't have the money for it already. 
And again, Dial's happy to play a patient game. It's sort of weird to see, again, such contrasting games between the two teams. But we're almost 21 minutes in, and it's there's been one kill. We had a bloodbath last game. Yeah, this is the polar opposite. I guess they made up for it in game one. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. I hope you don't like health stuck. You're not going to have much this game, if that's anything to go by. Fantix demonstrating how strong of a play he is. That was some sick RNG on those crits. <laughs> Because you know what they say, better players crit more. Well, Fanatic's definitely a good player. Has the blue buff now as well. So Stark gonna have to be quite careful. Fanatic again on the wave clear duty right now. Ray's is finally gonna rejoin his team. He has red buff, I believe. So he's actually quite strong. Dragon's up, Dials ready to fight. Yeah, that'd be the third dragon too for Dials. Would not be surprising if they try and look for a dragon fight. Unfortunately for them not having the package. Makes things a little bit more difficult to execute. Of course, they also having the inside track on Vision. Just kind of have Sybil, I guess, for Engage. Kudin can help out as well. But the Dials do have to play their 280 carry comp carefully. Especially with Sharp going to be delayed to the fight with that TP. They are going to start the Dragon, though, and Avant, they are in the area to contest. They should just push mid, though, AV. It is the third Dragon, so that can be now a cause for concern. As long as this game continues, Diawals, they have that outlet for more strength. Unfortunately, if I do have to back away, I think Sharp being MIA caused a little too much concern. So Dial is a very clean third dragon. They don't sacrifice anything but maybe a bit of chip damage on the tier two in top lane. And Dial's out to a gold lead. It's not much of one. In fact, I can't do math. It's not a gold lead at all. AV are just not pushing any advantages though. Like, say so four members of Dial's noticeably stuck in the dragon pit can very easily control the next minion wave in anticipation for them wanting the dragon and just make a decision. But they're not making a decision, they're reacting to them for the most part. This has happened twice now, Chelby. He's the one aggressively cl clearing vision, getting wards down, just setting up for the rest of his team. But Diawals can try and capitalize on that fact and make picks with the Gragas and that is actually what they are doing. And so far, successfully. Yeah, Diawals now going to play to the top side of the map though. Stark with the Hurricane now completed. And looks like that Cull's ticked all the way down. So looking pretty healthy for the Cogmore as far as items go. But Raze does go back, pick himself up a last Whisper. So pretty cheap, but very efficient as far as damage goes right now for the Ezreal. And he's only going to get better. Panic's on the other side, waiting on that expensive build again. Infinity Edge is on the way, but it will take him a short while. It's very curious, though, to go for the last Whisper this early. It's You say efficient, I think it's somewhat efficient. <laughs> It's cheap, I think is so, what I meant. Yeah, no, it's, as in the item is. It's a good item to buy, but they don't have a whole host of armor. It's more so to take down Rain Tear and Chelby, who are the only two with it. Mm -hmm. And what makes the Last Whisper efficient is roughly 200 armor, I believe, mm -hmm. is the mark where it becomes good because it's bonus armor penetration. Oh, I'm stuck. That damage. Is that rocket? He has a package too. Oh, Ray's looking for the snipe. Does get oh, it. Oh, nice kidding. heal. That was a very well-placed Ezreal ultimate. That was a great ult from Raze. And now Direwolves, they've got the health advantage. They can try and make something happen. We'll see if they do. Oh, that's still blue buff. Bendix, that's the, yeah, Bendix saw a blue buff. <laughs> Package is running out, I assume. But he is going to go ahead and take it. Oh, Shelby maybe says no. Bendix did steal it. Says too bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got to imagine, like, Earth's tongue sticking out. Yeah. <laughs> Like, now he's missing health. Diawals have just wasted a lot of time that could have been spent maybe pushing. Destiny looking for an ulti. Sybil goes in for it. Chelby on the backside gets a good flash double knockup. But Fantic will flash his way to safety. The Wild Growth Burner Sharp has joined the fray. He's locked up so many people in the back line. Just being an absolute nuisance on the poppy. He'll flash out to safety to the Diawals. Only got Destiny. Yeah, surprisingly. And this is the sign of an experienced team, Diawals. Look at the blinking health bars of most of their team. Yet they still push forward. This is it. Oh, sharp. That was too much. Shelby able to take him out. Raze was playing forward, but he ran a little low on mana. Avant are going to defend this tier two. So it's a one for one in the end. And it's, it's good team fighting, but it's poor decision making this time that comes back to bite Dire Wolves. Losing sharp was not necessary. They should have actually just backed up after that, not get over aggressive and look for anything further. Fantix started that fight with less than half of his health. Managed to get out with his life, which was impressive. But again, Diables and AV, honestly, it's there, but it's not all there. And let's set it up as well. Look at these big waves that Raintear and Stark are trying to 
combat right now. That'll be some delicious farm for them to collect. But Dials, if they had a bit more health, would have been a great time to push down mid. Unfortunately, like you said, perhaps lacking on the execution. This triple now just in to clear out the mid lane. Does have himself that rabbit on, so looking good. Pretty much everyone has the two item spike going right now. Sharp actually with two and a half items, so Ice Bond not done yet. Went for the Spirit Visage first, just to be maximally tanky as Ray's has now finished Lord Dominic's regards. Yeah, this is still the thing that you need to look at here. AV are running a Morgana Lulu Kog'Maw. And there's no amount of times that I can say that that will accurately represent how strong they can be late game if Star is let off the leash. And that is a dangerous prospect for Dials. Like, Fantix does work now, and he does still scale well as a Corky, yes. Ezreal still scales reasonably well with damage. No one scales as well as Stark right now. No, especially not with and the back pocket him. Lulu. Yeah, and that's the worry. It's been a slow, methodical game from both teams. It feels like the Dial was wanted to set this sort of pace of a game. And I've been impressed with how they're playing the game out. But it feels like, like, I don't care how well you execute your plan, is it the right plan to begin with? And I guess... As the game goes later, we're going to start finding it out. That, though, is not the right plan from Sharp. He's going to get himself he caught in the jungle. Gets put in the bouncy castle forever. A Sybil trying to ulti, but he does save it. Sharp will live for now. Oh, is going to chase him out. Kudu with a nice ult down the choke point. It's Kelby. He's going to try and tank as much as he can. Stark, though, starting to do real damage here. But a nice ult from Sybil is going to disengage the cog. Range here a little low. Will flash to safety. Destiny missed the Destiny's key binding. Trouble. Now going to go down. Fantix able to take him out and Stark now. A little too far fall, but the Dials do not have much health to work with. His Rays goes straight in for it. But the Cogmore's alive. Oh, Fantix can't get him down. Sybil does get him, but he dies in the process. Rays chases too aggressive for triple. And Stark just gets himself an easy double. Four for one win, Avan. And Dials just have a brain fade once again. Do they... They've lost the concept of going backwards. Every single time they go in, they pay for it this time. Stark didn't die. You have to kill Stark. This is to protect the Stark team. If by... Oh, Sharp got caught first, to be fair. And that is what forced it all to happen. Kuden followed, got caught as well. Had to use his ultimate. Fighting at a choke point against the Cog. Well, not a good idea. They always make it work, but then they make it unwork. Yep. Tried to force a fight there, but... Again, wasn't the right fight to start to begin with. As Kuden's going to try a very brave Baron still, but he's not even going to get a look in. Shall be able to secure that. And all of a sudden, it feels like our first lead of the game has been established. Avant, 3k up here, 28 and a half minutes in. But most importantly, they now wear the Baron buff. Yeah, they've got the buff. They've got the control. They've got the team composition to scale with. But here's the other thing. Shelby's walking towards it. That will be the fourth one the Dial will pick up. Kuden says no. They are working on the Dragon. Oh, this could be a bit dangerous. Sharp going to turn on that ulti. He kicks the jungle out, which is the right play. They are going to get the Dragon, but can they get out What's with their stuck? lives? Reigns here wants it. Stark fires into the front line, and Sharp melts to the Cogmore damage. Exhaust is late from Kuden, and it's not enough to stop the pain train. And now they've got two members dead for 30 or 40 seconds, and a barrened up Avant to contend with. Not ideal for Direwolves right now. Very interesting decision. Stark actually tinking the tower, speaking of not ideal, but Lulu's going to help him out. Avant will get their sixth turret of the game. And Direwolves don't really have enough wave clear to defend. Ezreal Cork is pretty good. The Baron Up minions are awfully hard to kill. And Stark's just going in for it. There's the Juggermore. Straight in onto Fantix and Sybil. No ulti, only the flash to work with. Avant going to break the center. They'll take the inhib as well. The Direwolves, they lose so much for that exchange. They absolutely do, and now the Direwolves' only hope is in five odd minutes. They lose their first inhibitor, they have to clear top lane, and they are being run around the map with no answer to this Kog'Maw. And again, they are now waiting for fifth dragon. If they survive that long. Again, the Direwolves have a plan, but looks potentially shaky given how Avant have gotten to at this point in the game. Lulu Kog said it at the start of the draft, a dangerous a uh, combination to give over to a team. Stark making it work so far. 304 on the cog. Three items and counting as he's now going to Hex Drinker to do some work against all those, all, a lot of that Fantix damage. Kuden's so far out. Yeah, Kuden's just trying to ward, I think, but got to ward as a team. If I'm going to show you why. As Ray shifts over the trees, that Shelby will not let you have any vision. Not at all. They are starting to bleed it out. 
And I'm going to even question if the Iowals had a strategy coming into this game. They didn't just draft strong champions. Their champions are great. Their draft is great. But now we're just comparing. <laughs> Every comparison feels slightly weaker. Well, Stark again is going to keep this. firing. Just damage straight in the coot with Unbreakable up. He almost takes out the Braum. Stark just doesn't care. He's got Lulu. Shelby going to take some damage. He's going to get bought back into the team. It'll flash out to safety. Frantier going to get locked up by the Braum ult because the Dials need to defend this turret. Destiny gets moved out of the side. Ooh. Civil, he didn't flash for it. Now Stark with a wild growth on him. Can start going crazy. Avant just need Turret's to close gone. out this tower. Tower is absolutely dead. Bandix lays down the package. That's actually not the worst play. Going to try and keep the minions out, but Avant are not done. No, they've just got the health advantage. Stark's still full. Sybil's back. Keep your eyes on the cogs. Got no flash. Stark playing up so far forward with the Lulu to help him out. Sharp going to lock out a front line, but Dials do not have enough damage for this Stark. Gonna help finish off the inhibitors. This rock portal minion manages to take it out. What an MVP. <laughs> That's now two inhibitors down in Avant's favor. They've got the hyper carry, they've got the team composition, they've got the makings as well. As decision making from Diawals has been very peculiar. And the biggest thing in that last small exchange as well was Ranger actually using the pillar, stopping the body slam from Sybil. Very cute. Good play there. <laughs> Again, engage options are somewhat limited from the Direwolves. It really is Sybil that gets most of them going. As you can see, Triple and Stark, best buddies at this stage of the game. Going to start working on that last inhibitor turret and inhibitor. Direwolves have far too many super minions to contend with at this point. They should have just played standard lanes. Yeah, that's the thing that I think I find interesting is that they sort of elongated the game. Intentionally. Which makes sense, kind of, with Ezreal Cog. But against, sorry, Ezreal Corky. But, you but elongate against Cogmore, I don't really understand. You want to elongate to Trinity Force, and then yeah. just win the game. And like that gives you a mid-game period then. Doesn't give you early. Mm -hmm. Doesn't give you late. Yep. That's the problem. Well, pretty small window, and it looks like it may have shut here for the Dialogues in this game. Avant, they're going to try and force game number three here. Still got a decent gold lead. It's only 4,000. Now, that, you may think to yourself, that's not too far ahead. And on the numbers, you would be correct at 33 minutes, but implied power so is a very real thing. Right now, there's no Baron. There's 1 minute 30 till Dragon. Ooh. Sharp's in. Tried to make a play, but he didn't find the right target. Triple ults himself, though, but Stark is going to turn around and go nuts. Sybil with a decent offer. Stark flashes forward back into the team fight. Sybil somehow still alive, but Kuden's already down. Sharp's far too low. They got Destiny. That's not the one they wanted. Rainty though tanking a oh, little Rainty's too much. Dead. Rage takes him out. Stark in the front line is trying to go for it. But Sharp gets him into a wall. They take out the Cogmore. And now Fandic's going to take out Triple. Massive damage there for the Direwolves. They somehow turn it around with the Ace. And now they've got one minute till the Dragon's up. But the health bars of these members are low. The base health is also low. There's Rock Portals pushing in and Super Minions everywhere. But the Direwolves, they don't say die. And it's all on the back of Sharp and Fantic sitting in that back line effectively. This is, so Stark is putting in work, but he runs out of his W. So he doesn't have the range anymore to keep up. Sharp's super low. He is not in the best position. Stark missed positions. Knocked into the wall, has to die. Fantix just goes ham. And ridiculous work, honestly, from Dialus. The gold lead, you said it, it was only 4k. Well, it was two after that. And guess what's up in 15? Number Dra five. Dragon, and everyone will be up for it as well. Direwolves, they've gotten their backs in. Rapid fire cannon's been completed for Fantix. Four items for Ray's done as well. And Ludens for triple on the other side. Have to feel again, fairly even as far as the overall items go. But if Direwolves lose this, they lose the game. They have an open nexus available to them. This is the all or nothing play right now. And AV are ready. Kuden's not even in position. This could be a problem. Avant going to try and close the trap. They're going to use the pincer maneuver. There's Dials. They have to force it's getting low onto the dragon. Shelby going to move in to try and steal it. Rain's here. Oh my god, Shelby. He gets punted out of the pit. They get it. Dials. Five dragons. Can they force the fight now? Rain's here. Caught up to the side and Sharp is absorbing so many hits. But Destiny is going to take him out. Stark just does too much work. Rain's. He will finally kill Rain's here. But Fandix is caught. He's going to go down. Three kills for one already. Rain's. He needs to play the game of his life. He's going to keep it in it. But he can't nope. do it. The shutdown's there for Stark. The Juggermore will reign supreme today.
And AV get the team fight, even if Direwolves get the dragon. It takes a quite a bit of time. But even the minions, we're going to do it for them in the end. AV, they round this one out effectively. Direwolves had no answer. Certainly did it. And a game that looks close by the numbers did not end particularly close by the end of that last team fight. And you have to think, Direwolves, who played an excellent macro game for, again, funnily enough, the first 25 minutes or so, could not find a relatively slim window of power. And my only question is why? Why put yourself in that situation? Feels like they didn't respect. It feels like they honestly just did not respect AV and the capabilities of playing the Cogmore Lulu. Maybe they thought that the mid lane is just a Zed player or Assassin player, but everyone can play Lulu. That's the thing. Yeah. Cogmore is not a difficult champion <laughs> to play either. You stand still and press W. Well, that's exactly what they did. Avant with great, a uh, great end to that particular game. Another long one, but this time it's Avant with the win. Let's hear more on it from the analyst desk. Thank you so much, guys. Two very even games. It's 1-1 one, one now. Avant able to pick that one up. Want to take it back to draft as well because they got the extra ban. First ban of the game, however. They didn't need it out. Let's just like... <laughs> Get rid of the Gangplank, please. Oh, God. <laughs> I really loved as well. They added the Elise fan on top of it. So getting rid of that, targeting uh, Sybil's champion pool, which has been under question over the last couple of weeks there as well. So I do like getting rid of that champion. He does show a lot more proficiency when he's on that one. Still did a decent job on the Gragas, but leaving up the Lulu and then not picking away the Cogmore, it's a recipe for disaster. Yeah, they gave a lot of power picks over to the side. Uh, of Avanti. They got Lulu and Cogmore and they traded that for Gragas, they traded that for Ezreal and Corky and Brom, but the Lulu-Cogmore synergy was just too much for them. And it was kind of strange to me because we said, you know, the top side of the map of Avant, they're going to be the ones that beat them. And Direwolves is like, we dare you to make Stark beat us. Like, we trust in ourselves that much. But what people don't really realize about the Protect the Cogmore comp <laughs> is like, if your Lulu's ahead, your Cogmore's ahead, I guess is the way the game goes. Because Cogmore wasn't ahead the whole game. No, no, he was, he was behind <laughs> by about 40 CS, I think, in the middle of the game. It's like, oh, yeah, got my cull, though, so don't worry about it. We <laughs> yeah. got, like, we the extra gold. Boys, we scale yeah, it. we are definitely scaling. It didn't even matter. He got his, like, couple of items, and that was all she wrote. I mean, he was just an artillery cannon. Yeah, it and, didn't matter. And scale they did. They, they did the best thing that you could possibly do with a Protect the Cogmore comp, which is delay the game as long as possible, give up as many objectives as you need to, but just try and stay relevant in the game. That's what they did. They traded towers nicely, they gave up their mid-tower, didn't fight for it, they gave up five dragons and didn't fight for it, so they played it perfectly. Yeah, they certainly did, and that means we have 1-1, one, one, but right now we're going to get ready to go into game number three. Don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be back in three and a half. <laughs> 